blessing to our fathers and happy fathers to all the fathers who are listening to this broadcast. Actually, today is a very special day to me because two years ago on the 21st of June, I lost my father. He went to be with the Lord. And let us raise a blessing for all our father, because uh, to all our fathers, because deep down within ourselves is the image of a perfect father. And I believe that image is the image of God himself. And so let's just look into the image God has given you of the perfect father. And I just want you to proclaim that blessing, that same image you see within yourself to your father so that God will richly bless. Now this, let's raise a blessing together as a church for all our Father. And I would like to raise this blessing from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17. And let's pray and let's unite to raise a strong blessing. It says that the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Father, we pray that you will, Lord, give each Father, O oh Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation, Lord. Have Heavenly Father, I pray that the blessing of God, that true wisdom that comes from God will come to each of our fathers. And Heavenly Father, and I pray the gift of knowledge, the gift of revelation will come, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that we together as children will value and, and respect the wisdom and the knowledge that comes to our Father directly from God. And Heavenly Father, today as a church, we raise a blessing to our fathers that you will bless them with the spirit of wisdom and revelation that comes from God. And verse 18 says, in the eyes of your un that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will raise each father so that their eyes will be enlightened to see the hope of their calling, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the calling of the fathers and Lord together as, as children and together as fathers we just want to thank you for the hope of our calling and Lord I pray that each father will be so stirred up knowing the hope of their calling as being fathers Lord. Heavenly Father we thank you Lord. Father we remember the many times that the heartaches they go through Lord the difficulties of life they go through and Lord Jesus the turbulences that come but I pray in the midst of all this that you will enable our fathers, that you will enable us to know the hope of our calling, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We pray for those who lack fathers. And I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray for every spiritual father. And I pray, Lord Jesus, the father figures of the, of the workplaces. And I pray that there will be such a blessing that they will know the hope of their calling to be fathers. Oh, Lord, we thank you. And verse 19 says that what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe? according to the working of his mighty power. Father, I pray that you will have the great power of God working through all the fathers. Father, what is lacking in all the, we men, what is lacking in our fathers and ourselves, that the power of God will begin to move through their hearts, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray a great blessing wherever they are weak, that you will lift them up. Lord, wherever they find difficult to cross, that you will Lord, wherever they feel weak, I pray that the power of God, the mighty working power of the Lord, will move through their lives. Oh Lord Jesus, verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the same power. Oh Lord Jesus, the same authority, Lord, will be given to all the fathers, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that this day would be a truly a blessing, a truly a day where all the fathers become so free and liberated to be all what God has called them to be. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we worship you. And it is my privilege to call upon Dr. Lalit Mendes, is the senior minister of Brookside Church. 
and he has been my spiritual father from the, from 11 years old. So I think you all have been blessed through his spiritual fatherhood and it is my good pleasure to welcome him and you may be in your own home but shall we give him a round of applause and welcome him. sickness or whatever. So we remember those, Lord, today who are joining our live stream, our House of the Lord service, who are still feeling the absence and sometimes we know they just keep that chair in that special place in the house where the Father would sit. So we remember, Lord, that vacuum in the home and we say, Father in heaven, come and feel. Let's pray for fathers whose memories are about uh, absence, wasn't at home, some fathers who abandoned home, and let's pray for them a reprieve if they are still alive, come home, come home, come back to the Father in heaven, come home, ye who are weary, come home. And for those sons and daughters who may have gone through a house life, a home like that where there was conflict and the image of God did not get conveyed through uh, father and mother working out together. We remember such homes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we remember homes where, where the father uh, passed away far too early and a single mom is raising up a daughter, a son, or oh, Father left home, we remember, Lord Jesus, your kindness, how much they need. We remember your promise. You are the father of the fatherless. You are the husband for the widow. And you bring the solitary to live together in, in a family. Thank you that God's family is such an oasis, such an oasis, such a refuge, such a large house for everyone to feel family. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' precious name. Uh, let's pray for maybe a father who, who lost a son very early. We pray, Lord Jesus, for such situations, or a daughter. Father, we pray, or, or such a grievous trouble came into the family. Now we pray for all such sorrows in the house to match which the father has to be the height from earth to heaven. So we thank you. 
James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. So here is the Father's job description. The Father has to, James 1.17, the Father has to uh, work with the good gift God gave him. Of course, gave father and mom. This little fellow came from heaven with a God's, a God's scope. And this good gift, father's mission, mandate is to match, to make this good gift he has got into his hands. Uh, I hope you remember the time when you first held the little fellow in your hands and he felt your heart beating. And this good gift and your life mission is to make it help grow to that perfect gift God has for this child. So it's, <coughs> so if you know the Heavenly Father, because he gave the script for this son, this daughter you have, and it'll help you greatly if you know the Heavenly Father to keep the script this child has inside himself, inside herself, to grow up to the perfect gift that God has. So when there is a gap between what the perfect thing and what it is now, hurt comes, humiliation comes, fears come, and some can get very angry that they are not getting it, what they feel inside them they could get. So we make a prayer, Lord Jesus, today for any son in the house, any daughter in the house who feel as if space is not being made, they have asked that to be the steps of a ladder. And we know, Lord, there is a hard task. Dad has his own ambitions. Dad has his own uh, desires, drives. Maybe he has a career. He has a co corporate structure to fulfill and satisfy. And he might be missing some of these steps. His son and daughter wants him to be. So we pray an intercession. We pray supplication, Lord that every father who is listening and every home that is tuning in will find God the Father somehow molding the Father to be the steps of the ladder on which children climb to their greatness. Lord, this is a hard call. So fathers, we are learning sacrifice. We are learning denying ourselves. This is not easy. So that, the, that we, so the, here is the father's call, another another parable or another picture of the father's call to be a rung of a ladder that your son and daughter uh, have been given by God to get to the best God gave them. Not easy at all. So you have to, fathers are those who deny themselves to be the rung, a little step in a ladder. For that occasion, it might come at 12 midnight with a stomachache. It may come at 7.30 in the morning, you're about to go to work and the pain bowl has splashed everywhere. And you have to be the dustbin, you have to be the mop cloth, you have to be uh, all in all. So the father's mold is actually a God-sized task, isn't it? God help us. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, comes down from the father of light. So the call to be a father is also from above. Uh, so don't be discouraged, disheartened, also don't be arrogant and conceited to fulfill this, that which has come from above, to be father, you have to have God's grace for it. So may you be in a personal relationship, may you accept the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and look back and say the things I have not done right, Lord Jesus please help me, there is no totally useless father, there is no 100% perfect father other than the father in heaven. So we fit a range like that. Uh, so, but if we recognize that this call, ability, comes from our Father above. He's called the Father of light, with whom is no variable, no shadow of turning. So if I, if, if I can earmark, uh, sign up as an unalterable quality of a father that family looks for, is that you will be predictable. They're not asking you to be brilliant. They are not asking you to be wealthy. They are not asking you to be wise all the time. They are not asking you to have a solution and a remedy for every problem. But, they are, but their heart cry is, Father is reliable, dependable, 
predictable. You may have very little money, just enough or even not just enough. But let there be no variability. So the son knows when he errs that he'll get a hearing from his dad, not a yelling. The son knows that dad will sit down with him and somehow help them through. So whatever, uh, whatever the difficulties, whatever the mistake is, this side of the grave, every mistake is recoverable, redeemable, retrievable. So I have been a spiritual father for a long, long time. So I understand a little bit of the demand of a spiritual father. So if you categorize fathers, you have biological fathers, spiritual fathers, fathers in professions and in the corporate who are role models, who, who founded great organizations and things like that. Uh, then fathers in the political field. Now you'll realize fathers are becoming a rare species these days. And of course, uh, the, when there are no fathers in these fields of endeavor, people behave like orphans. Uh, so as a spiritual father, people have expectations. They hope the spiritual father will fulfill what their father did not fulfill. Or they hope spiritual father will fulfill what their father fulfilled. So there's always a comparison and a contrast. Uh, so spiritual fathers, those of you who are listening, who are leaders of groups of 12, or who are ministers in, in a head of a congregation, uh, I have to tell you there is no sure cut way, uh, to, uh, and successful is not the word here, even significance is not the word here. If you, uh, if you are looking for some words, sensitive and sensitive and steadfast may be the two things I like to suggest to you. Steadfast and sensitive. So keep doing the things that, uh, that buttress your call as spiritual father. Paul, of course, said in Galatians 4.19, O oh Galatians, I travail for you till Christ be formed again. So you are bearing in the womb those whom you minister. That's the biblical New Testament expression of spiritual father. Uh, no variableness, shadow of turning. So you never give up. Uh, earthly dad never gives up. If you are a father pioneering a field, you never give up. And even a home dad, you never give up. So there's no shadow of turning, no variableness. That's the uh, that's the quality Heavenly Father has. Now, Heavenly Father, here's a contrast. Heavenly Father is perfect. No earthly father is perfect. He's imperfect. Yet, children and home needs to find a role model in you. And in some things, at least, you give a lead and you give an example to follow. Two, Heavenly Father is all-powerful, omnipotent. You're not all-powerful. Sometimes you are very weak, but you're always protective. So say with me, sometimes I'm very weak, but I'm always protective. Uh, so that's the difference between Heavenly Father. He's all-powerful. We are not, but we can be always protective. Uh, Heavenly Father is omniscient, all-knowing. We are not all-knowing. We are sometimes ignorant. We don't know what to do, unwise at times. But we must understand Incompetence is not a virtue. So a father's uh, role is also a subject. So everyone who is a father, who is becoming a father, who hopes to become a father, that about includes all males, uh, has to, they have to, we have to train ourselves, read up and get a course, get a curriculum. Uh, when, so stress happens when your demand on your fatherhood exceeds the supply you have. So often you can't reduce the demand on fatherhood. You can reduce the demand of other things on your life that you might equip yourself sufficiently to be the dad at home. So today we are looking mainly at dad at home, though I have touched on the fact that there are spiritual fathers, there are work realm fathers, there are political fathers and so on. Uh, so then uh, God is omnipresent, but you can't be omnipresent. But be present. Be present at the time the family needs you most. So this is where the sensitivity comes in. Be present. Above your, if you have a working desk, if you have a room at home where you work also, put a big, big, big little whatever, placard or whatever. Be present. 
meaning don't be absent. So you don't know, you, you can't do everything, you don't know to do everything, but be present. Uh, make it, uh, this is a thing I have always uh, learned over the years, be present. Whether you are able or not, be present. Whether you have the solution or not, be present, yes. Uh, so that is, uh, earthly father must be adequately present. So here I take a, a scripture from Proverbs 4, 1 to 4, maybe listen to this. Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father and give attention that you may gain understanding. For I give you sound teaching, do not abandon my instruction. When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother. So whom do you think is speaking? I'll repeat it. When I was a son to my father, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother. This is Solomon speaking about mother Bathsheba and David the father. Then he goes on to say, Proverbs chapter 4 verse 4, Then he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live. So who is this he who taught Solomon? David. And what was David? King of the country. But he takes time to keep Solomon on his knees. And Solomon remembers much later when he was world famous as a wise man and a rich man. And having done grandly for Jerusalem, uh, he's recalling how his father taught him and many proverbs of Solomon are what David taught Solomon when Solomon was young. And Solomon is writing them, recalling. So imagine uh, you recalling what your father has done, what your children recalling what you have taught them. What is it that you recall about your dad mostly? I recall my father was a very hard-working man. He was a teacher. He lived for his family. He had no other life. Only thing he had to earn more than his salary to educate us in good schools and to have uh, sufficient means to maintain a vehicle, he worked all the time. I can't remember a time my father slept in the afternoon. All my memory about him is teaching, 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 mathematics, English or singular. He was teaching all the time, working all the time, but uh, most evenings at about 4.15, 4.30 maybe, maybe a little later, while a whole lot of students have filled the house and he's doing tuition, he comes and plays cricket with me. And he can bowl overarm quite well. I thought that's quite cool. At his age, he could bowl overarm quite well. So this has stuck with me that cricket is an excellent thing to play with your son. Maybe you get your daughter interested also unless you learn netball or something like that. Uh, you can pitch the ball and coach him. So dad, when you, when you are coaching the son in fun things, you get a chance into his heart to coach him in things that are more difficult for him. So you are earning your time, earning your access, earning your hearing, so to say, by doing things he likes and showing him the better way, when you come to things he does not like, you can still show him the better way. He has confidence now, dad showed the better way in the things I like. So maybe in the things I don't like also, dad can show the better way. Uh, then I want to take uh, uh, instruction from Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is about fathers speaking the word to the sons. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, love the Lord your God. So please, Dad, uh, this loving the Lord is a thing you need to model. Model it more than speak it. Speak it as you model it. Model it as you speak it. So uh, somehow, when children begin to love the Lord, they discover their heart early and their heart becomes strong. So many parents are so keen to make their brain bright. Good thing. Make your brain bright is a good thing. Make their brain bright is a good thing. But don't neglect their heart. Very young, get them heart strong. They'll relate to you heartily. There's so much on online. So many times they go to the digital gadget. But without commanding, coaching, coercing, cajoling, don't go to the screen, don't go to the screen which of course you must keep telling them. But if you enlarge their heart, interact with their heart, this will need your time. Then they will have a 
uh, what shall I say, an engaged heart, an embraced heart. Now don't think little fellows are little. One thing, little fellows are not little. They remember everything. Two, little fellows become big fellows. And when they have become big fellows, they are not listening to you. Why? When they would have listened, when they came behind you saying, Tati, Tati, or Daddy, Daddy, or Appa, Appa, whatever they are saying, when they came behind you, always listen to your child. Whatever you are doing, I have learned this, when they come behind you, it might be the most inconvenient time. Stop what you are doing and say, what is it, darling? Stop what you are doing and say, what is it, darling? That's how you engage them in their heart. So with all their heart, all your soul, all your strength, we teach them to love the Lord. He loves God with all his heart. Who loves nothing in comparison of him? He loves God with all his soul or rather with all his life, who is ready to give up life for his sake. He loves God with all his strength. This is dead. Who employs in his service all his goods, his talent, his power, his credit, his authority and influence. Dad, this is your call to model loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. It's a worthwhile investment that will train the child in the way the child should go. He loves God with all his strength and in return you get divine help for loving the Lord with all your strength. He loves God with all his mind. So I have written many books for dad to read. I have, you must get them and read it. I have written uh, the first 10 chapters of Genesis as, as a little scientific book, but any dad can follow it. 7 p.m. in the evening is happy hour. Please interact with your son and daughter and read that through. I have written another book called Wonder and Wisdom. Please read that through. All those books are written as 40 lessons. Each lesson reading takes only 15 minutes. It provides you interactive opportunity for the son and daughter to ask you spiritual questions, scientific questions, intellectual questions, uh, and so on. That's why those books are written. I have written another smaller set of books, Right Learning and Recovering Childhood, Children, Our Heritage, Our Future, Parenting, Heart and Brain in a Digitally Dominant Age, Mom and Dad, Mistake Management. These are little books also, which you can read with your kids. Other books are little bigger books. They're available from Sarasavi Bookshop and Vijithyapa Bookshop. You must get into those interactions that build the heart, build the soul, build the strength, build the mind of your son and daughter. It's a worthwhile application. Then verse 7 says, uh, Deuteronomy 6 verse 7, You shall teach them diligently, impress to your children, shall talk of them, talk of the word of God. When you sit in your house, so that you must find enough time to sit in your house, interacting with the word of God, spiritual things, and of course there are studies and other things, sit in the house. So in dad's timetable, sitting in the house with the children also must have a preeminent place. <clears throat> so as I always say when you return home at 6 or 6.30, or if you can return home 6.30, great. 7 is, you know, if you return home while the sun has not gone down, children remember you better. That time, uh, they are more able to receive you. And as you are stepping into the house, no more smartphones, no more other things. You wear the home smile. Now, you're not the big professor at that time. You're not the big mechanic. You're not the big teacher. You're not the big corporate boss. You are home dad for your family. So you, you must get ready. You park your vehicle and you say to yourself, I am Tata at home. Everything else... <clears throat> No more, at least for two more hours, yes. Then after they sleep, you may take it up again. You shall teach them diligently to your children, shall talk of them when you sit in your house. Then when you walk by the way, so the word of God is holding you when you are walking, when you lie down, so before sleep also, you tell them something about the word of God, a Bible story, and when you rise up, and when you rise up, you rise up with the work of, word of God. So this is immunity for yourself, Dad, that you are also in the word of God. You are going to sleep thinking of the word of God. You are waking up thinking of the word of God, which will also keep you morally pure, spiritually vibrant. Verse 8. Each parent to be a great teacher inside the home, outside the home, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. Verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hands. Everything you do comes under the word of God. They shall be as fontless between your eyes. Everything you think comes under the word of God. Yes, uh, so this is a prescription. Verse 9, you, 
he, Deuteronomy 6 verse 9 you shall write them on the doorpost of your house so your house is governed by the word of God your house is governed by the presence of God whatever comes into your house ruled by the word of God permitted by the word of God and what goes out of your house is also upheld by the word of God and all your neighbors know this is a godly house because they are with us we are blessed down the street on the doorpost on your gates so the neighbors know every aspect of your life every relation to your children and every decision of each day should be permeated by this command love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength now I want to get on to last bit of the message to give you a little, what shall I say, little four steps to carry out this. Remember this, I want to take the four steps from a very familiar psalm, uh, Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd. Shall we say that together? The Lord is my, try to say it by memory, it's okay if you have the Bible, look at it, it's okay, but let's try to say it by memory. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He uh, restores my soul and he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Just the four things, the lying down in green pastures, leading besides the more things, more things, then a place of restoration, and finally, parts of righteousness. Four, four departments of life that dad is going to be responsible for and craft it for your family. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So what does it look like not to have want? What is it? So this is emotional security, dad is very responsible for that. Mom gives early bonding intimacy and mom makes it safe for the little fellow inside the heart but dad gives him ability to face the outside did you understand that so when a child has mom with him bonding well he's confident in the house but if dad has not given him that emotional security when he goes out of the house he's like a rat inside the house he's very vociferous and you know because mom made him confident inside the house dad gives him the next step next stretch parameters boundaries crossing of the boundaries the step up so that you give him comp competence, you give him confidence. That is dead territory. Did you understand that? Emotional security, social stability, intellectual capacity. So early bonding, mom makes brain brilliant with early bonding. But intellectual capacity, you, you hear him, you hear her. They like to come and talk to you. <clears throat> Their little thoughts, stretch them out for them. So when dad is there, they feel like trying something. They never try. Your mom will always say, no, 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 no don't climb. No, 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 don't climb. They want to climb the chair. From the chair, they want to, the, want to get onto the table. So please provide them something that is climbable, like a stairway. That's why it's, it's an excellent idea to have a gym in the home in these days of uh, online studies and in these days of shutdown. I have done long clips. I have done 210 clips. Please watch some of them. I have given long details about how to do a gym at home. They are very necessary. Get some of those clips and send it to your uh, fellow parents, dads and friends. Some clips have been watched 36,000 views because people are in need. People are in need. This is a great time to reach out. Fathers are in need, mothers are in need, children are in need. Please, Christian, make this time your mission time to reach out to a friend. I know it's tough for you, but Christianity is also thinking about others. So emotional security, social stability, intellectual capacity, of course physical product, uh, protection. Fifth department of I shall not want is adequate and assured provision. You may not be a wealthy man. As I said at the beginning, it may be just enough. Even if it is not just enough, they know you, they are doing your, you are doing their best. You, you are doing your best. So assured and adequate provision is so much an important part of a child's security. When the child begins to think of home, I shall not want because dad is a good shepherd to me. 
Second one in this line is green pastures and lie down. So when will a child lie down and feel green pastures? He's not in bond, he's adequate, there's safety and security. His boundaries are secure. Dad made the boundaries secure. No wolf is coming into the territory and the child feels appreciated, well looked after, no competition in the house, uh, their position is assured, they don't, they don't have to scream, they don't have to go on strike action to get what they want, what they need is supplied. So that is green pastures, uh, pasture is provision, pasture is stability, pasture is safety, pasture is sufficiency. Child feels, I really have what I need. Dad, that's a great feeling to have, I really have what I need. I gave you the areas of wants they will feel. Uh, you are not perfect dad, I am not perfect, there's no 100% perfect dad, but these are things, children are not demanding. Their needs are easily supplied. I'll repeat it. If you feel children are demanding, you adjust yourself. It's not children who are wrong, you are wrong. That's right. Reduce some of the demands on your life and make yourself available to supply their need. I can repeat this, when, when you think children are demanding, you are wrong. Children are not demanding. They are asking for their basics. At the age of 14, 15, 16, 17, they may grow a Trotsky beard and become demanding, but when they are younger, they are not demanding. They are just asking for what they really need. So dad, mom, please hear this. Uh, then we have lying down in green pastures. Then dad is the one who leads them into water holes. What's next? Uh, wh uh, what is his next growth? What is his next step? Has he got to be enlist enlisted in a cricket class? Has he got to be enlisted in a music class or any other class? So it's dad who goes and does that. But dad is the one who leads into the next thing. So dad, you are the champion and always the child will remember, Tati took me from my hand and he led me. And the child becomes a leader when you have led him. Child becomes not confident, don't know what to do if you don't lead him. So may you lead your child, your son and daughter into different things. Initially, these are simple things, artwork, craft work, you know, different, different little things, school work. But as they grow up, they remember, my father, our dad, led us into all the things we should have been doing at the right time. So you remember Psalm 1 also, the sufficiency that every branch in the right season, fruit in the right season, and when dad has been doing those things in the right season, those things are coming. Now dad, don't be overwhelmed. Just take it in your stride. Think of them and these things will come because you have been designed by God to be a dad. This is not a hard thing. This is a God thing. As you walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, the Lord helping you. So this is about the leading. Then remember the portal of adolescence. When they are passing 12, they are getting wise. Hormones are active now. Uh, so you need to watch their sexuality, teach them. At the age of six, they begin to learn about God from you. So present father means present God. Absent father is absent God. These things they'll get into their head. Uh, then uh, uh, loving father means loving God. They begin to know you and uh, God through you from the age of six. It is said in research, f the, what the father does at home, they equate that with what God is like. So when you are a, a kind father, they think God is kind. When you are listening to their request, they think God is easily found. God listens to our requests. If you are not listening to their requests and you are never to be found, they'll think God is also an absent God. So from age six, their view of God is forming from the fatherhood you give. So it's not difficult. It's not difficult. So 14 is a portal of adolescence. 21 is a portal of adulthood. You must be there. Two other things that you must lead in in unmet needs. Will you be sensitive to that? Lead in unmet needs. Third thing, lead through difficult terrain. Lead through difficult terrain. Then here are three A's, Fitch rating, three A's that we apply as dads. 
affirmation all the time, especially when they fail, especially when they are cringing, especially when they don't know where to hide. You say, son, you don't have to hide. You hide in my bosom. That's what God the Father did for us. He sent his bosom, only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when we don't know where to go, we do go to the bosom of God. When your son and daughter don't know where to hide their face, they come and hide their face in your face. That's what it means, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So they own our name. They own our protection. They own our worthiness. They, never, they will never lose face. We give them face. Dad, we give them face. So when you're affirming them, appreciating them, and then there is a appraisal time that is check and see how much more, how you can improve. You need to talk that language also. Darling, you can improve this. Don't talk the language of correction. Talk the language of improvement. You can, and give them simple commands. Don't talk rhetoric. Don't talk rigmaroles. Give them simple commands. Children, listen to commands. So tell them, you know, do it like this. It'll become much better. Yeah. Give them solutions because you are dead. I think I'll stop there because I have taken nearly half an hour, I think. I have two more sections about a place of, I'll just mention it, place of restoration. So at 7 p.m., daily give a little place of restoration, hour of restoration, because the psalm says, he restored my soul. So a little catch up. Uh, the son or daughter, whatever their age, 5 or 15, even 25, give them a little time of catch up with you. And they give them an easy time, um, almost an equal time, a time where they can bear their heart and say, Tati, this went terribly wrong. Bring, a, bring, make that possible. I'm not saying they'll need it every day, but in your timetable, 7 p.m. is happy hour, gaba hour, uh, empathic hour. They are able to approach you and you're available like that. Don't be busy at home. There's only one business at home, business of family. Write it down somewhere. One business at home, business of family. So watch over their unmet needs. If you don't meet them, they'll find devious, crooked, perverse ways of meeting their needs. Don't allow that to happen. Uh, last thing is to difficult terrain, lead them on. Uh, so this is uh, restoration, place of restoration, and the paths of righteousness that always models them. I will now take a little time and let's listen to this song. <clears throat> when I look into your holiness, and then I will ask, Pastor Hiranti to come and lead us in prayer. Uh, look into your holiness. When I look into your holiness When I gaze into your loveliness When all things that surround Become shadows in the light of you When I found the joy of reaching your heart When my will becomes enthralled in your When all things that surround Become shadows in the light of you I worship you I worship you The reason I live is to worship you and I worship you I worship you the reason I live is to
Father in heaven, we thank you for your presence in, your, in, a, in the midst of God's people this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we can lift up our heart to you. We thank you, Lord, when we, that you have granted us this opportunity to celebrate our fathers, Lord. We thank you for the Father in heaven from whom all blessings flow with whom is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Thank you for the perfect Father in heaven. And thank you, Lord, that we are not orphaned, even at a time like this, O oh God, out there. Lord, in the time of fear and apprehension, you are our Father who covers our head. Thank you, Lord, that we can come running to you and keep our head upon your shoulders and seek that strength that comes from you above, Lord. Thank you, Father. We are grateful people this morning. And we thank you for our fathers on earth, Lord. We thank you that they've been made in the image of our heavenly Father. We thank you for those fathers, Lord, who have gone to be with the Lord. We cherish their memory and we give thanks to you for the Father that was to us, Lord. And we remember our fathers now, Lord, and we bless them with the blessing of the Lord from the house of the Lord. And we pray health and strength over them. We pray, O oh God, that you will protect them, Lord, from all evil. We pray, Lord, from that you, your hand will secure them, Lord. You will bless the labor of their hands, Lord. We pray, Father, that you, the wisdom of God will be upon them to guide their family, their children, their work realm. Lord, we pray, God, you will cover them, Lord, from the enemy's devices, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father, that any attack that is being planned in the dark places of the earth will be foiled because God is with them, Lord. Father, we thank you. You have given us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt them, Father. Lord Jesus, we also remember at this time those who have never known the love of a father, the orphaned, the abandoned, we remember them, Lord. And we pray, Father God, God, that in some way we could fill up that gap in those lives, Lord. We pray, Father God, for the fathers in the nation. We pray, Father God, Lord, we pray for those who should be shepherds in our nation, Lord. We pray that an understanding will come into their hearts and they would hear the sorrow, the whimper, the cry of the people of this land, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will reveal yourself, our Father in heaven, to our people in our land. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Some are married, some are still with you. Will you take a moment and just reminisce? And if you feel there are any lacks, any particular incidents on which hurt is still there, all you have to say is, son, forgive me, daughter, forgive me. And may the Lord Jesus Christ come into your heart 
come into that situation. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for you. I confess my difficulties, inadequacies. You are a good, good father. You are a perfect father. Now you forgive me, help me to be the good shepherd in the home. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in your heart, in my heart for you. Forgive me my sins, be my savior, be my shepherd. I will ask Dr. Jahan to lead us in an altar call time. Let's, let's have an altar call. We usually call all the fathers to the altar and we pray, but since our meetings are online, we are bringing this altar right into your door, uh, into your homes. And I want all the family members, if you are with your father, to, uh, to surround them and to keep your hand on the father. This altar call is a very special time where God will meet with you. Soon after this altar call will be communion. So please keep the bread and the wine ready. And let's proceed into the altar call. We are just pronouncing a blessing on all the fathers. And, and, and this time your hands will be laid by the family members. And, and this time we are asking the Lord to shower his blessings, the presence of the Holy Spirit to come, to heal all the wounds, to fill, uh, wherever honor is lacking, to give honor, wherever bruises and scars are there, to heal them, and we pray for physical healing as well. Heavenly Father, we just pronounce a blessing on all our fathers, and in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, we want to pronounce love, we want to say that they are loved, Lord, wherever honor is lacking, we pray honor to them and we honor the fathers. And Father, I pray for physical, emotional and mental healing for the fathers. Father, we pronounce a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the presence of the Lord be upon us, Lord, and the glory of the Lord will come on all the fathers today. Father, we know if the father is blessed, the whole family is blessed. So today, we take this advantage of blessing the Father and so that there would be, a, Lord, a rebounding blessing on all the families who are watching this broadcast. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please stay with us for communion. <laughs> 